Over the years, we've seen a very strong interest in what's called empirically based interventions. Um, researchers for many years, when the, when the brain injury problems seemed relatively new, people spent their time trying to describe the problems that people had. And so now, and especially because families and people with brain injury are, are asking for help, and uh, we're, we're listening very carefully, um, there's a much greater focus in the re in, among researchers on uh, developing interventions and evaluating their effectiveness. And so that was actually a shift in the work that we've done at Virginia Commonwealth University is we shifted away from describing the problems to now we've shifted to trying to help people with those issues. And we've developed programs to help people get back to work that have been very effective. As Taryn said, uh, we've been working with families and our goal is to try to uh, develop programs that are specific to helping uh, married couples. And we also uh, have developed programs uh, for our inpatient setting that help people improve um, their memory and communication skills. So the direction seems to be going into uh, developing and evaluating uh, interventions that are helpful to families as well as people with brain injury. Mm -hmm. And I would just add to that that the medical model, our traditional kind of rehabilitative medical model, uh, in the past looked at the individual as being the one who had the injury and the person who needed the rehabilitation. And as a health system, we're very good at getting people better physically, pretty good at getting people better cognitively, and we don't look uh, very much at kind of the emotional process of injury and getting better. So I think one of the important directions that our field is moving is we've expanded that lens to look more carefully at the couple and the family and how the injury impacted those systems. And we're also uh, very interested in helping people cope emotionally in addition to rehabilitating uh, the cognitive and physical concerns related to the injury. We have an article coming out uh, in the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation which looks at the emotional well-being of caregivers and, and we found that uh, about one in five had problems with depression, clinically significant problems with depression, one in five had clinically significant problems with anxiety and I mentioned that we've spent a lot of time describing issues and concerns and so now our focus will be to shift more to provide uh, support for families, couples, caregivers, uh, all very important. Additional research that I would mention is that we've sort of built a foundation for looking at couples' relationships by looking at marital stability. And what that means is we've done some analyses to see if after injury uh, couples stay together or, cu or couples separate and divorce. And so in Richmond, Virginia, we have found that 25% uh, of people six to eight years after um, an injury will separate or divorce. Uh, but the next step is we don't know why. We don't know why people make decisions to leave and decisions to stay. And for the people that choose to stay in that relationship, uh, maybe it doesn't feel like a choice to them. Maybe it feels like a mandate or they're making good on the uh, for better, for worse promise. Um, and so we want to know more about how satisfied people are in their relationships, what kind of quality people have in their relationships, and use that as indicators for what we can do as professionals to help support relationships and make them more positive and uh, more rewarding.